All right, welcome everybody to another test round of Autopilot. So today we are on 2019.8.4. I got the .3 release a couple of days ago, uh, but didn't have the chance yet to test it. So now with the uh, .4, let's test that as soon as we can. That means right now, and let's see what's what. Here we're coming up the hill crest. Last time, oh, a little wiggle towards the exit, but nothing to be worried about. Last time I did this, um, the car actually veered off to the left a little bit to try to find the center of the lane when going downhill. So let's see, I'm not expecting anything at the top here. Yep, that's straight, no problem. And here at the bottom, let's see if it finds or it tries to find the middle. Just ever so slightly, but it corrects a lot sooner than it did in the previous release. So that's an improvement. And here we're coming up at the small intersection where left and right the lanes disappeared or the lines disappeared a little bit. Sometimes it wiggles but this time it's just going dead straight. Yep, so that's a pass as well. Now one thing I did notice in this update is that I personally feel that Autopilot has gotten more stable in keeping the center of the lane. So this is the moment we're all waiting for. The dreaded S-curve can this update actually take the curve without me needing to intervene? That's always the question. The best uh, update so far has been uh, 2018.39.7, which wasn't really an official release even. Uh, after that, it deteriorated, but let's see how it handles it now. Oh yeah, that's good. A little bit to the middle of the lane on the exit there. Um, but yeah, it kept well within the lines. This is also a little bit too far to the side to be comfortable, but it is staying well within the lines right now, which is uh, great. We haven't seen this behavior since, uh, yeah, as I mentioned, um, that's 39.7. Uh, from last year's update. So that was like September or something. So yeah, way to go Tesla. This is a good update on that front. So one thing that is good on this update, well actually a couple of updates is I don't need to keep the blinker on. Oh, and there was a car coming a little bit too fast. It went back to the own lane. I didn't do anything. I just touched the blinker slightly. So I didn't put it in full lock. The car kept it on until the maneuver was complete and automatically turned it off. Now I know that for some of you that is a couple of updates old, but for me this is new in this update. And it's good that it's still keeping track on the oncoming cars. Um, so yeah, and let's see what happens when we just pass that truck and we try to maneuver into the truck by doing the lane change. Let's see how long it takes before it allows me to do the actual lane change. So next to the truck, activating the lane change. Well, that was a full lock. It is slowing down still for some reason when you pass a car. I think that's really weird. I think it has something to do with the fact that the car doesn't know whether it is actually uh, passing the car or the car is passing from the right. But yeah, um, it's, it's still weird, it shouldn't do that. Here again, coming up on that truck, it's going to slow down. Starting to slow down, I initiate the lane change, keeps the same speed, and then it builds up again. Yeah, you hear the click from the indicator stock because I'm still not used to just touching it, but yeah, I think, uh, the lane change in itself hasn't changed much 
it's just the convenience of not having to use the indicator stock all the way down so that the car will turn off the indicator light automatically. Now also something rather new is the fact that um, if you're on autopilot the car will not accelerate past a car on the right side. So it's not legal in Belgium and I think in most European countries to uh, overtake a car on the right side so you have to always overtake on the left side and the car actually takes that into account and slows you down to stay behind the car that's on your left side now I remember with autopilot one that was also the case and that posed a problem because if for some reason like for example there was an accident on the left lane and you're in the middle lane um, on the highway then it would slam on the brakes because the cars on the left would uh, slow down heavily as well. Don't think that is a good thing, but you can always override it by just tapping on the go pedal and then you, uh, your car will accelerate past it on the right side anyway. But still, it slams on the brakes uh, first, which could lead to a potential dangerous situation because then you are actually braking for nothing and the car behind you might rear-end you. But yeah, it's again uh, a fine line between common sense and applying the law to the letter. Um, so yeah, that's, I, can, I can understand that's not that easy to implement for Tesla. A little up ahead we have the lane shift, which is a tricky situation because it's a fast left-right. And right in front of you there's a... Um, space where a lot of the time trucks are parked there so we need to see whether this is the case and sometimes the car thinks you will drive into that truck instead of doing the lane shift and then it starts braking so let's see if we can actually do that it looks like we're the first on the traffic lights so we need to get up to speed rather quickly Okay, let's do this. Come on, give me autopilot. Go. 70, yep, yeah, it's braking for the truck. But it is taking the S-curve. It seems to be better right now. Let's do that again. And this time I will keep my foot on the accelerator so it doesn't brake for that truck. All right, so second try. Let's hope the lights stay green. And I'm going to keep my foot on the accelerator to go, to keep going 70 kilometers an hour. Here we go. Oh yeah. Yes. Thank you, Tesla. They fixed the S-curve or they fixed the lane shift, I should say. Um, yeah, that's that's great. Because the last couple of updates, that was not trustworthy and it would drive just straight on into the curb. And now it does it perfectly. Thank you, Tesla. All right, time for another conclusion. So what do I think of the update 2019.8.4? I think it is... A big step forward again uh, a really needed step because of the way it handles that s-curve and the way it handled that lane shift so the lane shift was a regression before that has been fixed now and the s-curve that hasn't been well since oh the, the last half year at least uh, and it has never been that good it's still not 100% but let's say it's like 90% there it is staying well within the lines, it is slowing down during the curve and it is staying in its own lane, not causing uh, a potential head-on collision. So that's really good. Um, one thing I noticed also is a little bit more uh, phantom braking again. Sometimes it hesitates for a parked car alongside the road that it thinks it might be in your lane 
so that is not so good but yeah you win some you lose some i guess uh, and hopefully in the next update those phantom brakes will also be fixed so for me i'm really happy with this update unfortunately in europe we still don't have the navigate on autopilot officially a few people seem to have it uh, mostly in the Netherlands it seems uh, at least from the people that I know but um, yeah no luck for me yet um, hopefully in the next update that will be included as well might be a legal thing I don't know uh, but I'm really looking forward to that one and testing that out on some very complex um, intersections or uh, highway interchanges um, as you guys call it usually um, so yeah we have a couple of uh, very complex uh, situations like that in Belgium and uh, hopefully I'll be able to report on that soon as well. And as always, if you like my videos, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel using that button over there. And uh, don't forget to click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos. And for now, thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye bye.